All right, Shalom. Um, I wanted to touch on the subject because of a certain brother on Facebook, you know, um, I brought up the topic of black conquistadors and how the black man assisted Christopher Columbus and Hernan Cortez and the exploration or coming over here to the Americas. Um, the so-called white man did not know how to get over here. But they basically read the scriptures and found out that there was a place beyond the seas to explore. And they basically came after us because they had the spirit of Satan on them. And during this reformation time or the Renaissance time, you know, Esau was trying to come back into power because we were ruling Europe for over a thousand years, in which I'm going to show a little bit of history that we were up in Europe. All right. So basically, I'm in this book called um, The Americas or The African Americans. Right here, The African Americans. Many rivers to cross. And I might have to do a couple of part series, so I got to be quick because I'm not allowed to record up, you know, past 15 minutes. So right here, um, we'll start right here. It says, if not all the first explorers and conquerors of the new Spain were European, it is equally important and surprising to many of us to note that not all of the first Americans who assisted the Spanish and Portuguese came as slaves. An, un an untold number of free people of African descent, black conquistadors, right there. Okay, black conquistadors born in Africa or on the Iberian Peninsula also accompany Spanish conquistadors such as Hernan Cortez and Ponce de Leon, two of the famed explorers of the vast region that will become modern Mexico in the western and southern regions of the United States. And as we might expect, their exploits were just as heroic and just as problematic as those of their fellow conquistadors. But far more Africans came with the Spanish and Portuguese as slaves, servants with varying degrees of freedom, attendants, or armed adventurers. Okay, so right now we just learned that there was a such thing as black conquistadors. When you read further down, these black it says these black conquistadors right here set an example for subsequent racial relations throughout the entire Spanish colonial experience. Living their daily lives with the degrees of complexity rarely would be achieved by black men, women in the early English settlements in the Caribbean and North America. So what they did before basically taking time in the 1400s and 1500s was different versus what happened as when black people arrived in America in like Jamestown in the 1600s. See, our people were free. You know, we weren't always slaves. You know, we came from Spain. We came from the north part of Africa. You know, basically during that time when the Moors were being expelled and surprisingly, the Jews were being expelled at the same time out of Spain. You know, take notice of that. So basically we were what they participated. These Africans participated, so-called Africans, really Israelites. They participated in the exploration of the lands that would become modern day Mexico, Costa Rica, Honduras, Panama, Venezuela, Peru, and Chile, as well as Florida. See, and it says what? Right here, men such as Juan Garrido, Esteban, Jan Rodriguez, Gaspar Yanga, uh, Juan Bardales, uh, Juan Garcia, Juan Beltran are just a few of the better known people of African descent who helped transfer them the Western Hemisphere. So these so-called black men, Africans, right, had what? Spanish names. Okay, so let's not be fooled. You know, a lot of our people say, oh, how how was the uh, the Bible written by white men? That's what, they had white people's names. Okay, well, what about these black people who had so-called Hispanic names, Spaniard names? Okay, let's think, people. All right, jumping over here is another piece of very important information on page two. 
it says the repeopling right here of the Western Hemisphere through a series of voluntary and involuntary migrations over the past 500 years was never a one-sided process, and it was nearly solely a European experience. It may come as a surprise to many Americans to learn that African people played an essential part in the process from the very beginning. According to one source, Alonzo Pietro, the pilot of Columbus' ship, the Nina in 1492 was a mulatto, a person of mixed black and white ancestry. And in 1502, the great Italian explorer was accompanied by a black cabin boy named Diego. So then right here, it calls him an Italian explorer, whatever, but it was a mulatto who was the pilot of Columbus' ship, showing you that that Columbus didn't come over here with just a whole bunch of white boys and taking over, you know, the Americas. These Edomites were accompanied by so-called Africans or whatever you want to call them, but really they were Israelites who were living in uh, Spain, all right? And during the wars that they had versus the Catholic Church and being expelled, which they called uh, the War of Granada, um, they basically sometimes took sides, whoever was paying them, okay? Whoever was paying these dudes, you know, we about, you know, our people about whoever is paying up the money, you know, they went and assisted them on how to get to the Americas. Now, I'm going to show you proof that Christopher Columbus was constantly around uh, Israelites trying to find out how to get to the new world. He was cunning. He was a devil, Okay. He was a straight devil. Right here, you can learn about the, it shows you right here about the transatlantic slave trade database. Approximately 12.5 million Africans have been sold into the New World slavery. All right, but that's, you know, you know, during, of course, that took place after he found out how to get over here. That was his plan. All right. And when he got over to, first, he used this to help conquer Cuba and all these places, um, Puerto Rico. You know, right here, you'll read it right here. And his fable, Fountain of Youth, took armed black men with him to conquer Puerto Rico. See, our people were used to help seize, what, Cuba, all these places. All right? So that's the history that they don't teach in the um, in schools. They act like we just came over here as jungle bunnies. Right? As jungle bunnies to the Americas. All right. Um, let's see. Page three right here. Um, right here. It shows you right here in this ver in this, in this, um, paragraph, perhaps one of the best known of the most colorful of the free black conquistadors was Juan Garrido. I don't know if I'm saying the name right. Juan Garrido. Born about 1480 in West Africa, Garrido either was sold to Portuguese slave traders or somehow traveled on his own to Lisbon, where about 10% of the city was African descent. Okay, Lisbon, when you look it up, is in where? It's in Spain. 10% of the city was Negroes. They want us to use that word African, but they were Negroes. All right? This is what they do not want to teach you in the school system. All right. Now you got a, a picture of a black dude assisting who? Hernan Cortez. Longer to armed with the pike attending to the horse of Hernan Cortez. See, they always bring a Negro with them to, you know, when they're going to the lands to the other natives of the America. Why? Why do they bring Negroes with them? So they can, what, be peace. They can, like, basically negotiate. That's what they're not telling you. Okay? Now, when you go over here, this is Garrido's story that a free black man and a conquistador is difficult to match. So when you go over this, 
you know, first Africans in the New World equal that the Moroccan-born Black explorer known as Esteban, while his early years remained something of a mystery. He began his career in the Americas in 1528. So we were over here in the 1500s, all right, helping these Edomites come over here to the New World. Uh, let me hurry up. Uh, another good thing, the book to read is The Black Indians, okay? And it goes in to show you that how we spoke many different languages, you know, as we assisted the devil. All right. I'm going to show you this. Who's that? George Washington. But let's read up. Let's read down right here. All right. The British subjects this question of bringing slaves so close to the frontier of the Native Americans stirred a lively debate. A South Carolina law of 1725 imposed a a uh, fine on those who brought their slaves to the frontier. A British colonial urged enforcement because the slaves taught good English as well as Cherokee language and too often tell falsities to the Indians which they are apt to believe. So wait, hold on. When we when we watch these um slavery movies Oh, we didn't know how to read and all this, but right here it's saying we talked good English. As well, we spoke the what? Indian's language. Let's wake up, black people. Right here it says what? Virginia surveyor George Washington, 23, urged the use of mulattoes, which are mixed, and Negroes as pioneers and hatchet men in the wilderness. An early print shows a young Washington with a black and white surveying team. See that? When he's going across the Americas or America, he needed a Negro with him. All right. George Washington, who advocated bringing Afro-Americans to the frontier despite their proximity to the Native Americans, is shown in Virginia with the black and white surveying team. So basically, you know, there was elites or white boys that was scared for us. Uh, for, uh, scared of bringing Negroes out because we were joining forces with the Indians, Native Americans. Why? Because those were our brothers. All right. Those were our brothers. As you would, um, when I go into this other book right here, I'm running out of time, but it shows that Christopher Columbus knew that we were coming over here way before. Let me go into it way before them <laughs> all right let me let me grab this um let me see and why not it talks about uh let me go to page eight in this book all right let me just go to the second uh paragraph Columbus listened attentively and the information about the Guyana, which is in Africa. Boats was new to him. He had been to Guyana 10 years before and had seen the fortress at San Jorge in Domina, which Don Juan was then constructing. Little known of Guyana, the trade and navigation at the time, for the African world was vast and strange. And the Portuguese had but consuming interest gold in the pursuit of which they had scratched a mere fraction of the Guyana coast. So they were trying to get gold out of Africa. But when you jumped in, uh, let's see where it talks about um, they knew of the reports about basically oh here we go right here the africans he said had traveled to that world that world was the americas it could be found just below the the equin equinoctial line which is the equator roughly on the same parallel as latitudes of the domain of guyana so the parallel is what the brazil the americas off the guyana coast so they knew that the africans knew how to get over here. So they constantly used us. They constantly used the Israelites. That's why you see him there, Hernan Cortez, during the same time, right, of Columbus, bringing what? Israelites. 
Israelites from Spain and the West Coast of Africa. Shalom.